title of my speech says, what is a four-letter word? I think it's a wonderful four-letter word, and if we could use it as a replacement for some of the less wonderful four-letter words, that would be wonderful. I have a question, though. How can something as primal, as basic as love, the feeling that one person or being feels for another, how can that be legislated? We've tried to legislate this over the years. Up until 1967, it was illegal to be in an interracial marriage. Loving versus Virginia, the Supreme Court ruling in that case broke that barrier. Nowadays, we have this civil union bill in Congress, well, not actually right now, because it's been postponed once again. House Bill 444 has been postponed. They're trying to say that the person you love, you can't marry. How would that make you feel? It would make me feel pretty bad. This has been happening since time immemorial. Shakespeare wrote about it in Othello. Othello and Desdemona, a Moorish man with a Venetian woman. Now, what is a civil union? A civil union is not a marriage. A civil union is basically a legal tenet that says that this couple has some of the rights on a state level that a married couple would have. Now, married couples across this country, on a federal level, have over 1,000 benefits and rights that come with being married. Some of those benefits and rights include joint parental rights, immigration and residency status, if I marry a man from another country, he can become a resident and become a re legal resident of this country. If I fall in love with a woman and go into a civil union with this person, she cannot become a resident, a legal resident. She can be deported. I don't think that's quite fair. Other benefits that married couples have are Medicare, the right to sue for wrongful death benefits, the list goes on. In Hawaii, we have what's called a reciprocal beneficiary relationship. The RBR status can be obtained by submitting $8 and a form to the Department of Health, and they will give you a certificate that says you have reciprocal beneficiary status. Now this will allow these couples to have very limited rights. They will have rights of visitation if the person, if their partner goes into the hospital. But they won't have rights to, to have a child with that person and to adopt jointly that child. That's not one of the rights. Right now is kind of a difficult time in the world for people who are gay, lesbian, transgender, or bisexual. And I know that <clears throat> this is a kind of a tense subject, but I want to ask everybody here, what right do I have to tell you who you can marry? Who, how can I tell you you can't love that person? because that person is not morally correct for you. It's a very strong argument. There's very strong arguments on both sides. But I would just like to have everybody stop and think for a moment. Fifty years ago, when the anti-miscegenation bill laws were in place, outlawing interracial marriage, a few couples stood up and fought for that right. And nowadays, when you look at the couples we see around in the community, you'd be amazed to think that those 
laws were ever in place. Because it's quite a common thing to see nowadays, to see interracial relationships. It's not 100% common, but it's very common. I would just like everybody to take into account the fact that we are all humans. We all have the right to love who we love. Whether that person is a partner, a spouse, a husband, a wife, we all have that right. So as you're driving along and you're driving home, remember, love is a four-letter word. Just remember that. So when the guy cuts you off in traffic, say, love you, man. <laughs> Remember that one, that you guys, that's your